Okay, shafts removed. This is the center piece that won't be used. This piece had a flange on it. Eight bolts are on that. Eight little tiny bolts. So these eight little bolts right here are what move this entire truck with its load. Eight, that's all that's connected. That's crazy to me. Um, so, hi. hi. So this was the flange that was mounted to the back of the um, brake, uh, driveline retarder. This was the slip yoke. That one was at the front, basically right here before this carrier bearing went in. And there's an intermediate shaft, another shaft. So this is the shaft I'm gonna use. I'm gonna keep this. This goes on the rear end, just how it used to be. But then I'm gonna take this flange off and put it on this U-joint. So essentially the U-joint will have, or the drive shaft will have a slip yoke in it. I squeezed all the grease out of it when I compressed it, but this flange mounts on this guy, the flange mounts back up there, and then the drive shaft ends somewhere, somewhere around here. So that's where the center of the axle is gonna be at. Um, so then what I'll do is all these braces, I'll take out um, all the hangers for the exhaust, cut the exhaust out, everything. Um, this one here will probably stay I think yeah that one will stay but this goes away this goes away this goes away this goes away and then this whole cross member that whole cross member all of these brackets um, the relay um, the airbag brackets the shock mounts everything basically that whole section just slides on up the frame right there so what I'll do is I'll just take some white paint and just do a quick paint around each piece and all that does is just remind me um you know the shape of the bracket that's touching the frame that way more than likely what's going to happen i got to work tomorrow unfortunately but um, what's going to happen is i'm going to get all this unbolted and then it's going to set for like a freaking week and i'm going to forget everything so the paint will just give me a reference that i can see the shape of this bracket that was on the frame here so I know that that goes there. In, in theory, it all should be pretty self-explanatory, but um, it's better to cover your tail in case you forget or whatever. Um, and then obviously all of these airlines are gonna have to get shortened up too. So I'll mark each one where each one went. You know, I'll put a number one on this and a number one on this and disconnect it. And a number two on this, number two on this and a two on that and disconnect it. And a number three on this and a number three on that and disconnect it. And I can pull all those airlines forward out of the way. And then same thing with that. That whole thing will just literally unbolt and get bolted up here um, where it needs to go. Um, and then the cross members, um, these should be, those might be interesting. I don't know if they're gonna come out, but with all of this stuff in the back unbolted, the frame should be able to spread just enough to, uh, just enough to get those cross members in and out. Once it's up here, it won't, because um, we have this cross member that's gonna hold everything together. Uh, so I'll have to go through and like all these little brackets and stuff are gonna have to get disconnected and pulled back. That's kind of interesting how much, there's no space in there. I wonder if those have been, oh, they got a rubber isolator on it. I was thinking, man, those airlines sitting there rubbing that cross member forever, but they've got a rubber rubber isolator to keep it from chafing um, but anyways so and then I don't know how heavy this frame is um, I'm guessing where's the center line of the engine at <laughs> it's fine center line of the engines back here so there's quite a bit of weight engine transmission gas tank I mean all of that back there um, I was thinking of just taking the crane and Picking, picking the frame up once everything's unbolted, but uh, that may not be enough. I may have to get some uh, some heavy duty jacks and maybe build up some cribbing with wood or whatever just to hold this frame up. And then uh, I'll have to unlock the brakes. Um, unlock the brakes and probably all I'm gonna do for that is, probably all I'll do for that is just cap off an airline, put a fitting on it and fill it up with air and that way the brakes unlock. 
and then uh, muscle this whole asshole forward. And uh, yeah, I called it an asshole because I guarantee you that's what I'm gonna be calling it later. So uh, slide the whole asshole forward and, um, oh, and then I'm gonna take a story pole, right? So I'll figure out based off of the center to center of the U-joint, um, once this thing is, once I get that uh, flange reinstalled, I'll figure out exactly where this, exactly where the center of this U-joint is compared to the end of the flange. And that's gonna give me my measurement from here back to the uh, uh, pinion, uh, back to the yoke back here. So that's gonna tell me exactly where this all gets placed. Uh, and then of course I've got a couple of inches of play in it. Um, I'll have to figure out how much, I think there's about six inches here. So I'll slide it out to three or whatever and call it in the center do my measurement and that's that uh, and then uh, I'll make a story pole so basically whatever size hole this is if let's say it's a 5 8 hole which is probably probably a pretty good size hole um, I'll just take a piece of wood with a bolt measure my let's just assume it's gonna be 92 inches just for the sake of argument I'll take a pole 92 inches put a bolt in it that sticks in that hole right there and has another one over here with a point on it and I can mark 96 inches exactly where it's going to be and do that for all six holes all six holes on this bracket I can do it for these two holes on this bracket and then any other any other holes that are that size um, and that's going to guarantee that the spacing from here to here from here to here is the same all the way up I can always measure that by eye but if you have one consistent um, denominator in the whole thing it just keeps it all from uh, falling out of whack and then uh, then I can do you know lay a piece of wood across the top and measure center line of each one of these do the same thing up here measure center line click 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 and there's that uh, so that's the plan uh, we'll see if it works well, this went a lot easier than I thought in the essence of being remarkably dangerous about this we got uh, the horrible freight with a steel plate with a hole cut in the bottom. And, uh, pushing out just like it's supposed to. It's never happened to me before, ever. I like commercial vehicles. But that was a whole lot easier than I've ever, that's the easy, I've never had a U-joint come out that easy. That's crazy. So there's the flange, came off this one. That's trash now. Now we'll put this U-joint, which looks like it's got lots of life left. Grease looks clean in it. Um, uh, it all looks decent, so I'm just gonna reuse it. Uh, so I'll take this guy, put it in here, and now we have our drive shaft. There's a new shaft that goes down there. Slip yoke. That goes over there. 60. To 64 is the spread on this guy, so 62 is the length from the flange to the end of the cup, which is what will contact inside here. Okay, we are ready. Um, I got this guy put on. Um, when I took it off, I just did a little paint mark to put the flange back on in the original location. I don't know if that's gonna matter because realistically this drive shaft is not balanced um, technically. I may end up having, <clears throat> I may end up taking this off and having a drive shaft guy balance it just to be safe since I've changed so much of the whole thing, but I don't know, we'll see. If I feel vibration when I drive, I'll take it off and uh, have a guy balance it. If not, um, run with it and there we are. So. Um, I threw this U-joint in just temporarily just to get a more accurate measurement. So basically if we measure from this point right here to this point right here, that gives us center to center of U-joints. I've got 82 and one half inches. Um, that's basically, and that gives me that two inches there that uh, I wanna use for um, the slip in the rear end. Um, that's one thing I haven't checked. I'd be surprised, I'd be interested to see. And this is with the truck at right height. Um, 
I'd be interested to let the air out and remeasure that and see what the difference is uh, to see if I'm going to do that just anyways. So I'm just going to let the air out of this thing. Let the suspension drop. And what that's doing is now this has actually moved closer because it's working on that arc. So now we're bottomed out. So if I remeasure that, uh, I mean, you can see that was crazy. Uh, this was pointed almost vertical and now it's like, now it's pointed like way down. So now if I remeasure that and see if I have 82 and a half, that's going to tell me basically how much this drive shaft is going to slip to make sure that two inches is going to work. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Um, you can actually see this mark. Um, where the hell's the, what the hell? Okay, there you go. So you can actually see the silver. That's where the old, um, that's where the old seal used to ride. So um, that's at ride height. So this shaft was at the very end and had basically the same distance between carrier, the, what, the next U-joint and the rear end. So realistically that two inches should be fine. But So that means that everything here moves up 82 and a half inches. So if I take measurements 82 and a half inches, drill on my holes, which actually this might end up, hold on for one second. I'm just curious. I want to see. Now, oh, 88. Dang. That's right, right? 82 and a half. 82 and a half puts me right here. I was hoping that these three that are right here for this uh, this carrier, this support, matched up with these three because that would be six less holes I have to drill, but that's all right. So, 83, and if we were to do center of the 82 and a half. sense yeah so shorten it up another eight feet of, of about not totally wheels are here the wheels will clear the gas tank over there with plus another extra foot or so yeah I think that'll work out good so now I'll just get the exhaust all cut out um, get the exhaust cut out and then uh, I left these bolts loose I just tightened two of them just to make sure the flange was tight because uh, I don't know if I may end up having to pull this out while I get all this pulled forward and set. And then once this is set, uh, actually, I shouldn't have to because I should be able to compress it, you know, enough to get this moved up where it needs to be. Uh, so then we cut the exhaust out and then uh, spray templates over everything. And then when we're done, we can just paint it all black again. You'll never even know the difference. Start taking stuff apart, start drilling some holes and then slide it forward.